So the first item on the agenda is a uh, uh, budget workshop and update of the town hall feasibility study and agreement with Vermont integrated architecture. Discussion of budget related costs in the upcoming fiscal year, budget committee to attend, action possible. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do first is just since we have Dave McGee here with us, um, is uh, talk about the updates on the feasibility study. Liz had an airplane issue last night, so I stood in for her or sat in for her at the uh, meeting this morning. We met with the uh, we met with the folks from the uh, from VIA and. Uh, I passed out, and all the board members in Dorinda have copies of the amended uh, budget structure. And Dave, you, if you could just take a few minutes and run through that, that would be great. Sure, I think that's done before Liz and some of the grants that you're going to be working with. Yep. Yep. Uh, we did meet with two folks, two principals of the this morning. Peter joined on the, on the Zoom call, and they were quite amenable to making some changes. Very professional about it. They told us that they probably shouldn't make any changes. Uh, but the net after all that discussion was that uh, the target price, the initial price stayed the same at 27.9, but now includes $4,000 for civil engineering. Nice. So they picked up that. Excellent. And the contingency, which there will be some, they will hold none unless they want for their own corporation. They will hold none of our money as contingency. And we made that quite clear, and their reaction was, thank you. They didn't want it, <laughs> which that's kind of rare for an architect. But uh, I thought it was very cordial, and we were all working together. They're going to be working with Liz, as she'll describe. Uh, they're ready to start work probably middle of December, early January they'll start. But they're going to want to start visiting the facility on their own starting this Friday, pending this board's decision. And I'll just, are you? P uh, well, Peter, you were on the call. Yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, they, they, couldn't have been, they couldn't have been nicer. I mean, they were very clear that, you know, this is a, this is a do not exceed fee estimate and that they're going to bill us for their time as they go, and we'll know, and they'll know, and they'll be communicating with us how we're doing on the how we're doing on the budget. So we'll know uh, yeah, we'll know what's going on. This is not to exceed. Uh, yes. They'll be using the uh, standard AIA, which American Institute of Architects the forms, which I'm quite familiar with. And I am too. Great. So that'll be that's the way to go. So, yes. Is this going to, are you looking at having it sprinkled and having outside stuff for us to hook into? We don't know at this point. No, but they'll have to be sprinkled. You're not going to get a permit for this job. Okay, I just. Yeah. As far as the standpipe outside, I don't know. That could be something if the board wants to see that, we'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right, right now we have no water system to hook onto. So. No, but we could hook, a, we could hook an engine into it. And then be fed. Got so it. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. To look forward to that. Instead of having to do it. You mean afterwards. that if there were a fire and you had a sprinkler system, you could actually hook up to it and that's where the water would come from? Yes. Yep. Okay. I misunderstood your question. Yeah, so it'll be uh, there's usually yeah, two so you'll be feeding it. We, yeah, we can yeah. I mean obviously right now there is no infrastructure for a hydro system. But if there's a sprinkling system, if, if it's in there and we can hook into it, that makes our job. That's a perfect example of why they're going to be meeting with folks who are like you. Yeah. Folks who are on the community. So um, I know we have members of the Energy Committee here, and uh, did you want to uh, provide some input on this? Well, can I just first so say could, okay, what go ahead. the opportunities will be? So, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Regardless of whether or not we get this grant, so we're applying for the municipal planning grant, which is due December 1st. And next week, I'm going to meet with Andrea, one of the um, principals of the architect firm, that, um, and she and I will 
map out um, a budget that that um, works with this fee schedule, um, but is uh, allows us to sort of put some of the work that they would do February 1st and beyond, or at least the billing of February 1st and beyond, because the earliest we can spend the money is, if we get it, is February 1st. And, um, and so they can have done the work that we just can't have paid for the work. Um, so that'll be a conversation I have with her as well. So she and I will pull together what work would be included in this municipal planning grant. Included in that will be some community outreach um, opportunities. So we'll probably do a town-wide mailing to talk about this process. We'll have a couple of community meetings so that people can come to the meetings to talk about sort of their wish list or you know, hear from the community about what their needs are. They want community spaces, things like the fire department. Um, certainly, you know, they're going to come to the select board and they're going to um, sit down with us to, you know, s hear from us as well about what our needs are. Um, you know, and people like Sarah and Dorinda and the bookkeepers, you know, what are the spaces um, requirements that they need as well. Um, so, and I know the energy committee is definitely interested in, you know, what are the energy efficiencies that we can do with the building and BIA is very much, um, involved in like, that's just a part of their process is also looking at the energy efficiencies of a building. So certainly it would be helpful if there were things specifically that you wanted to have incorporated. Again, we're not building a building right now. <laughs> Um, but it's good for them to hear, you know, what is on the wish list. So there will be some there will be some opportunities for community input, not just in this process with these guys, but down the road as well. Because this is a long process. Like if we were to actually build a brand new town hall building or even do a big renovation, we're talking, you know, best case scenario, three years down the road, we'd have something. If that's when everything, all permits, everything went well, everyone agreed to, there was a bond, there's all kinds of things. I mean, we're, we're looking three to four years down the road anyway. And during that time, we certainly want to have community input, so. Is there any, uh, you signed proposal already or? No, so they met this morning to talk about, so we had gotten, we had um, agreed to work with the IA after a, um, we had received five bids. And we reviewed the five bids, settled on two as the top, and then settled down with one, which was VIA. So today was the discussion of um, what was included in their fee schedule. Um, as um, um, Dave. Dave. Sorry, I'm really tired. I didn't sleep at all last night. <laughs> as this man sitting next to you said. Uh, Dave Magida, um, that we were able to add in, get in, so it came out to be the same price, but we had the engineering added in, so we got more for the money. So the bids are only for the work that they're going to do, and I think uh, specifics on materials or design? Or Dave can a little bit bids. more about that. It's an group, now the board, now which option is best for moving forward to meet the, the town's needs? operations. And the three options we're having to look at is one, a renovation of this building as it is today, a renovation with an addition, and the third option is a new building. So they're going to come back uh, to this group and tell us what the recommendation is, the pricing options. Uh, the only way to do that is to learn what programming needs have to take place in this building when it's done, in the building when it's done, whether it's new or this building. So that's a big job to pull off between now and trust and town meeting day. But the schedule that they're working on, they think they can do that. Uh, but there's a lot more design work that needs to take place and then construction documents and construction itself. Is there a way that we could uh, get involved with them in this process? Or? Well, we are going to be involved with them. That's, that's critical. It's a critical part of the whole process is that as Liz was explaining, there's going to be several opportunities for the public to participate. Between now, now and town yes. meeting day? Yes. And then 
there's going to be other times where they're going to they want them to the board. A few. Hi, I'm just it's quite a word for you guys. So because we have viewers, we need to have a process for interacting here where we identify ourselves. And if you should ask a question, you should ask the select the chair if you can speak. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. So it'll be a little tougher. <laughs> I've been rep I've been reprimanded. Um, also, if everybody could uh, could speak up a little bit, that would help. Uh, sure. That would help also. Okay. Um, questions? Anyone? Energy committee? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> uh, this is Larry Sharp, Energy Committee. Um, yeah, the Energy Committee is just interest very interested in participating in the process in whatever way we can. Um, not just you know in terms of energy efficiency of the building ideas, but trying to look forward to other you know scenarios that might be relevant um, to this process, such as you know, electric vehicle charging, if that's you know a possibility, renewable energy, anything that's um, com comes under the sphere of, of energy related technology or um, transportation or, or uh, building uses um so we just want to you know be helpful and, and provide any you know kind of even future looking ideas that would dovetail nicely with any any planning that goes on well that's great and we welcome uh, we welcome your participation um liz sort of outlined what the what the timeline and the and the process is going to be but they're going to be public meetings they're going to be uh, presentations made to the board where you are, you know, there's select board meetings you're welcome to attend and make suggestions and provide input. And uh, if you have any thoughts at this point in time, I guess I would suggest they forward them to you, Liz or Dave. Yeah. If you have any particular ideas, but I guess, I guess maybe, and I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, but um, there's going to be a, uh, what I call a needs assessment process as part of this. And and maybe you would want to be maybe you would want to be involved in that portion of the process as well, rather than wait until um, our our contractor produces the report and then respond to the report. But we welcome your input, however you'd like to uh, however you'd like to bring it. No, that sounds That's great. We'll we'll participate early and often. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yes. $60 million to the state to... Uh, to I, I'm sorry, Enrique, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Can you just pull down your mask while you're talking, maybe? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I understand that the uh, Inflationary uh, Reduction Act is going to provide uh, $60 million to the state for uh, weatherization. Are we applying to that for that, or is there a way that we can do something in there? I, I would say it's likely we would be, but we don't know at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, you know, we really are like, this is like phase 1A, right? Like looking at the existing structure that we have right now, because we really feel like we can't go to the town and make any blanket statements about this building without really, you know, having an expert look at it. Um, and certainly, yes, I mean, we're gonna be looking at all kinds of funding sources um, and leveraging those funds as best that we can. Usually somebody like Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, um, the league, like they, they, they have their hands on, you know, what funding sources, um, you know, are available. Um, you know, I think Randy's going to um, be also probably aware of what's going on in terms of weatherization for municipal buildings. Um, so yes, the answer is yes. So. so this is this is just the very beginning, the very beginning. Anything else, anyone? Yes. The contract is not to exceed, but I'm not sure that I heard what the price is for the study. So the, the amended price for the study, as it sounds right now, is $27,740. And the maximum we can apply for for the grant, and I think they, they do sometimes partially fund um, grants, is twenty six four with a 10% match. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? Yeah, so, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Victor. Um, 
I got quite a few calls on this. And I don't have the answers to it. People are wondering why we're going to spend. Uh, why? Why? What, what's the purpose of the study? Exactly. In other words, we're not going to, like everybody said, we're not going to get a design. We're talking way ahead. You know that we're going to do this. We're worried. I mean, I think we should, if we do, uh, worry about uh, energy, uh, the fire department, and all this. But really. Nothing that these people are going to do are going to tell us that. Is that correct? Or? He tell explained us, that a little better to me. Please. Uh, what, what I mean, what you're saying is, what, what are we getting for our money? For $27,000, what are we going to get? I would suggest you review the proposal. I do. Okay. So do you have any? <laughs> I mean, yeah. They I outline mean, it pretty clearly what they're going to do, Victor. I mean, the, the, the concept is... We're none of us, none of us sitting in this room, and I mean, I know we have, we have people in our community who have some expertise, but before we go for a major financial expense where twenty-seven thousand dollars is going to be very small in the big ebb and flow of things, we just want to be very sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're taking all the right steps, that we have appropriate professionals looking at all these different issues and telling us making a recommendation to us. So when we go to the town, we can say, here's what our recommendation is based on the recommendation of our consultant, rather than based on five or six of us sitting around the table here and saying, well, maybe we should drill a well, maybe we should put in some more insulation, maybe we should have a energy efficient boiler, maybe not, you know, all those questions. So we need to do windows, who knows? I'm sure we do, but I mean, you, know, you could pretty much answer all the questions you just well, put out, right? Well, you know, the, the, other, the other piece of this is I, I disagree that we can answer all those questions because I don't know what the cost of renovating this building is, and I don't know what the cost of the new building is. And that's the, mm -hmm. that's the overarching question to begin with. If it turns out we can meet the needs of the community and renovate this building, and that's a cost-effective solution, hallelujah. On the other hand, if... It's going to cost more or the same amount to renovate this building, and it's going to have all the problems that an old building has, even though it's been renovated. Then the answer is we're probably going to recommend a new building. But I'm not in a position to tell you that right now. And I, I'm sure if we went around the room, there people might have an opinion about that. You might say, you know, I, I, have, I think we should hire a D10 bulldozer and turn this building into a pile of rubble and, and, and burn it up. I don't know. But the, the purpose of this is to give us good information provided by professional people who we believe know what they're doing about the way forward, the best way forward for the town. And since I'll be representing the select board, you can certainly have them call me because I'll be learning more at the same time, right? I mean, and I don't know what this report is going to look like either, but I think it's, it it's, um, you know, behooves us to have a professional review a building that we know is already in many ways, shapes, and forms um, not serving the needs that it needs to be. The, and I understand that we're, we're applying for, or you're applying, or we're applying for a grant, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know if we're going to get it? Nope. No, we don't. No, no. And if we don't get it? very competitive, actually. What's that? It's very competitive. Right. So if we don't get it, uh, where's the money coming from? I would say... Likely, well, it will we'll come from us. So, you know, is that a good use of our ARPA funds? Presumably it is. It would come from ARPA funds? I'm not saying necessarily it would all come from ARPA funds. Well, I'm saying it's likely it would. I mean, yeah. we have no, we, have, we don't have uh, $27,000 in our budget for this. So where is it going to come from? Right. That's, that's the yeah. question. Where is it going to come from? It was on yeah. our wish list. Our yeah, so there's, there's a couple pieces to that conversation. And, and some of the funding that Enrique had mentioned, you know, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and whatnot, the information that I mentioned in our last meeting, and I forwarded that on, on to Liz, that's a result of those, those, that funding coming down through to the state. And that, that funding is potentially another backup to the grant that you're applying for because it does help fund you know analysis of buildings and and uh, also energy efficiency measures within 
and I'm pretty sure it's it, it's isolated to existing buildings. I've looked into it a little bit more since our last conversation, and I don't think new construction applies. Um, but if that if that one grant was to not come through, there's potential that there's you know this other avenue that's that's starting to be explored. But I absolutely hear you, knowing that you know I plan for worst case scenarios, and if if neither of those come through. My understanding coming into this was that we had allocated, you know, that twenty-five thousand dollar earmarked that on our ARPA wish list, which we haven't approved. But um, for me coming document. in, that's kind of like the vision that I had, and and understanding that um, this report that they're going to be generating for us is going to give us, you know, it's not going to give us exact budgets for for anything, but it'll give us an understanding as to whether or not they're even remotely close to each other. Um, and which direction we want to go, because I think the town also will weigh in, like do they want to have a town hall in the village, right? It's part of our plan, our town plan, you know, is this something that is, that's important to the town? You know, or is it that we just build a Pecto home next to the fire department or next to Rumney? What's uh, what's the sense of urgency? Why why wouldn't uh, we find out if we're going to get a grant for it first? Well, do you recall that we went ahead and decided as a board to put out RFPs, and mm -hmm. so that was because we didn't get the CDBG grant, the Community Development Block Grant, and so in the interest of trying to move forward in this process which we know is going to take years and years and we have a failing elevator and a heating system that doesn't have parts to be repaired on it that waiting six months to see if we get this grant and then deciding whether or not we're going to do this didn't make sense so then we're like oh there's also this grant because grants are rolling they come up right so then we say okay we've already hired or we We'll probably be about to hire this BIA to do this and sign this contract. And here's a funding source that may be able to cover it. Although we had already had the conversation that we would put this money aside, even though there was no vote, we had this discussion. So this was something that we agreed upon. As we a board. agreed to use ARPA funds. If yes. It doesn't come and, through. Well, I mean, we had it on our wish list as this is what we would do if we didn't get grants. I'm sorry, I'm not the chair, so I'm not going to answer anything. No, that's fine. Well, thank you. In any case, got something. I can't, I can't, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, people have a lot of questions right now, you know, that, you know, obviously the, the biggest one is, that, you know, I guess you want to vote on it, you want it, you want everybody in town and, and uh, to be involved. And, and Liz, this isn't, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, challenge the 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 idea but people do ask and and you say we'll have them call you yeah and if they don't want to call you yeah i, I don't know I mean, if you don't answer. have the answer if you don't have the answers have them call peter peter might right. have the answers better right. or maybe but, Dave I mean, would are, be but, willing but to the other thing that. is there are going to be public meetings there are going to be select board meetings where once, this is going to be discussed. There's going to be a lot of Once we lot. spend our $27,000, that's the Well, question. as we start to spend it, yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. The whole, the whole concept for me in this is having good information. I mean, any information is going to be somebody's opinion, but hiring professionals to give you good information is good practice. I mean, if this was if this was me building my own garage or looking at my own house, probably I wouldn't do this. I'd, I'd, I'd go to people I trust and ask them to give me their advice and I'd make a decision. But where we're dealing with a community, I think we owe them, uh, we owe them this. And in the long run, I mean, I have no idea what, what the number is to renovate this building or build a new building. I mean, there are a lot of questions. I mean, for instance, are we, are we get, if we were to build a new building or renovate this building, are we going to create a building that has a large meeting space in it? I don't know the answer to that. How many offices are we going to create? How big are we going to make the vault? I mean, all those things are, all those things are to be determined, and that's part of this process. But 
you know, all those things. Are we going to put in a sprinkler system? Are we going to put in a standpipe? Are we going to, you know, on and on and on. On and on and on and on. This is just the very, very beginning of the process. Enrique had a question and then Dave has a Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Enrique. Enrique Bueno, Energy Committee. Uh, does, uh, has anybody done already an uh, energy audit of the building? Not as of yet. And is that part of the proposal or, 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 or yeah. should we? So they have, they have some called out some, um, some figures in here. Uh, I've also volunteered. Um, Is this where we should start? Then? Yeah, to uh, to make that effort um, for on behalf of the town and and use it as any potential match that they need to for uh, any grants that that might potentially have a match. And that's uh, not something that's not very expensive. So, yeah. so yes, that is part of the plan. Okay. I'm sorry. Who else had their hand up? David. Oh, David, yeah. I think no matter what option is selected, if the town wants to have a new town hall, whether it's a new op operating in this building or a new building or for this building plus renovation, that's going to be a costly project. No matter how you look at it, it's going to be costly. And as a taxpayer and as somebody involved in this project, I want to make sure that the homework is done before the option, the best option is presented and, and locked into. And the totally, only way to totally do that, agree, yes. yeah, totally the agree. only way to do that is to go through this process. Yeah. You can't have people say, you know, I, I'll bet you that the windows, like, I'll bet you that that tile has got water dripping onto it. <laughs> you, you don't want to do it like that. No, you no. Want to, no, I, tol more I totally agree that okay. the study has to be done. Yeah. I think the, I mean, the, the the energy uh, audit is something that, that we can do I mean, regardless any any time. I mean, that's a good starting point, at least for us to know what what the situation is. We have a pretty good idea how, how bad the situation is in the existing building. How to solve the situation is a is a different question. Well, the, the energy uh, energy uh, audit they can give you a lot of leads. What, can be done for the process to be done. And that work is going to be is going to be done as part of this project. So um, with that, I'm hoping we've used up we've used up 30 minutes of our agenda. Good use, but we've used it up. Um, I, I believe what we need is a motion to enter into a contract for $27,740 and not exceed estimated price for the work which is outlined on the revised on the revised proposal. And with that, um, they will present us with an AIA document, David. Is that what we believe would happen? Yes. And then we'll have a chance to, you know, David will look it over, others we can all look it over and agree to uh, and agree to sign it. I'll make the motion. Okay. And you'll second it, Phil? Yeah. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. I just have one comment. Okay, go ahead, Randy. Wondering if that motion should include the um, the contingency of using the ARPA funds to pay for this. I would rather not have if that we're be not a motion. Tied the, to reason, the reason for not doing that is if, if we disclose to the potential grant source yeah. that we have other sources of money, that's a problem. Yeah, that I mean, it's already on the air, but it's just yeah. we... <laughs> And, and I, we already have, I've written, it's in the grant that we applied for another grant, we didn't get it, and that, you know, if we had to, we would use, you know, some ARPA funds to, or that's how we would pay for our match. So, yeah. I just think we're, no, I hear yeah, you, I'd yeah. I hear you. Okay. So with that, are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Did you have something, David? Quick? Question. Yeah. How do you typically handle contingencies? Well, the contingency is not part of this. That's right. So I guess I think we should approve this, get the contract signed, and at the time we do that, we should say, you know, in our heads, we're building in an appropriate contingency, but we can also do it right now if you're more comfortable doing that. I don't care. And the type of contingency I think that, that could be used for a contingency in this project could be something 
uh, that at the last minute we want to have a study done about something, as opposed to a construction contingency with something that was an unforeseen condition. We're not at that point yet. Okay. And we talked about that a little bit. I just don't know how you typically. I mean, like if they were to come back and say, "Oh my God, you really need to do this." Well, or whatever it is, whatever causes the whatever causes the. Yeah. On, on, on that idea, I mean, you're saying this is the beginning of the process. Right. How how far are we going to kick the can down the road before we do something? But roughly, what would you say? I mean, a year on this. We're, we're going to no, start. Anything we're going to start ASAP. I asked them that question because I was curious. I was like, like, what? What are the next steps after this? So I think it's really then, you know, they present to us. We decide. Like we look at it and we say, like, what makes the most sense? Then, Dave, aren't there some sort of? There's, there's procedures you follow. The next step would be schematic, schematic design and design development, which is, means you, they took your our design. Excuse me, their conceptual design, we approved it. Now they go off and they do what engineers and architects do. And they spend a lot of time, a lot of time putting together construction documents. And before you move from conceptual to design development to construction documents, they have to get approval from this board. They won't march on to the next step without getting permission from this board. Right, I understand that. The, but my, my thoughts are that, and the question is, you know, if this is going to take a year, I mean, we already know, uh, I guess, that the furnace isn't think, all that great. I don't think the study is going to take a year. No, no, no. The study this will is, be done in February. And March. The idea is to have this study ready to present it. What I'm saying, meeting. Peter, what I'm trying to get at is we could end up spending a lot of money before we ever did anything, if we do anything. That is true. That's correct. Right. But the sooner we start, the better off we are. I mean, we, you know, we know we have that. If all of a sudden the water system doesn't work, we've got to fix it, right? Right. If the furnace doesn't work, right. we've got to fix it. Right. I, right. I think that that if those any of those items did happen, right. yes, we have to address them. Right. But I think that going through this effort, depending on when they happen, through this effort, and if we know that we're, you know we're getting to a point where everything is pointing to something other than investing in this building that can inform the decisions that we make around the repairs that need to be made well you know addressing it doesn't necessarily mean repairing it. maybe we simply move operations somewhere else it depends on the scenario right yeah right yeah yeah if it was catastrophic that's likely what we do but you know there's a, there, there's certainly an open question about about the uh, the furnace downstairs now is that a I don't know what it is ten thousand dollar item to replace that I'm sure probably it is um, but no matter what happens um, push comes to shove we're gonna have some energy efficient new heating system in our new renovated town hall that can be sold for some price it's not like it's a total loss if it's a one-year-old furnace but we have to have heat. I mean, or we put in we put in more Renais downstairs. That would be another solution. Shut up. The upstairs. Um, we really need to. Yeah, yeah. we're uh -huh. way behind. Okay, I have made a motion. <laughs> no, it's been moved and seconded. Okay. So um, the the question is that, that David brought up is: Do we want to amend the motion to include? Um, Contingency. The word. I'm sorry. Contingency. Owners contingency. Funds. Yeah. Owners contingency. Owners contingency. Can so we're taking because the question is. Is this like a percentage? Yeah. Like 15 percent or something? Whatever we think is appropriate. Was that was that settled at the last meeting? It was. Already? Wasn't it? I thought it was. Too. I believe. I believe we discussed 15 percent. I believe we settled it at the last meeting. Peter, can I? I think because this is a firm thing. I think. The contingency should be a budget item and not part of contracting with this service, right? Mm -hmm. And just I, build it into uh, the budget as opposed to approving this. Contract. I agree, because what, what we're voting on now is just that. approving just this just contract. contract, and I think we all we discussed it last time. We understand there needs to be a contingency. I agree, that's a good way to handle it. Is to include it in the in the budget. Um, and the minutes will reflect 
the minutes will reflect that we've discussed that, so it's not like we're hiding it or not disclosing it. So with that, uh, I would call for a vote. All in favor of the motion, which is to enter into a contract for uh, $27,740 with uh, VIA, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Victor's opposed. So four to one, the motion carries. So Dave, you will, uh, you will let them know and go ahead with the process. Um, I'm happy to call them if that's protocol, it's okay with you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Yep. And Dave, okay. I'll be in touch with you after I talk with Andrea on Monday. Okay. Fire Department. We're here. Good evening. Good evening. I do have one quick uh, piece of business which involves the Fire Department before we get into the budget discussion is December 1st is going to be a big day for the town of Middlesex and for the Middlesex Fire Department. The Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department, soon to be the Middlesex Fire Department. And I've been trying to think about, I don't think we want to do anything wild and crazy. I'm not thinking about fairs. I'm not thinking about dances. I'm not thinking about that. But I did think, I did think that it might be appropriate to have our first select board meeting in January, which I think is what, it's like the second or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's like right at the, have it down at the fire hall and just have a little, just have a little ceremony to acknowledge that the world is, has changed. And Liz said she'd make cookies at one point in time. Yes, she did. <laughs> I think Rand said he'd bring beer. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we need any of that, but I, th I think it would be nice to, oh, yes, nice, we do. <laughs> nice to have the members of the fire department there, have us there, anybody else in town who's, who's interested would be welcome, and I think it would be nice. So. How did the open house go? <laughs> uh, there were quite a few people who came to have their car, their seat. car seats checked. Nice. Yeah, okay. that was great. That was about Nobody it. from the town came. We had some people from, some people from Moortown. Mm -hmm. And I think somebody from Barry or Berlin, but nobody from Middlesex. Oh wow! You know, I didn't know about it until I saw it in the front porch forum like that Thursday or something. We had a front porch forum. I pressed the button. Okay, I don't look at it every day. So does that? I don't think we need a motion or anything on that. Does that make sense to? The fire department, does it make sense to us? Yeah. So let's, you, let's you guys probably need to make a motion that you're not going to be here, but that's not. Yeah, well, we'll warn we'll the meeting. We'll warn we'll the meeting is being there. there. Yeah. Whatever the mechanics for that are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully our Okay, person. good. Okay. We have budget information. We do. I'll let Eric do it. He's the treasurer. <laughs> okay. Proposed uh, fiscal year 23-24. So does, does the budget committee have to? We do. You do? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Because I was going to say we should try and put it up on the screen. If no, they don't have I, think, okay. I think everybody's had a chance to see it if they've opened their email. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Eric. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the property and casualty insurance and workers' comp was... Uh, Added by Dorinda because I did not have those numbers. And that those are tentative numbers. Those are just guesstimates at this point. Yeah. Until we get our renewal. Yeah. Okay. Um, our our supplies for the building, uh, we raised it uh, two hundred dollars to six hundred dollars. Um, our equipment repairs, we did drop that down a thousand dollars just because we haven't been spending close to the. Uh, 10,000 that we had budgeted. We had a few bad years, and that's why we had raised it up. But um, uh, equipment purchases, we stayed the same. Um, where was I? Equipment, yeah. Uh, telephone stayed the same. Fast squad, we stayed the same. The electricity, I uh, raised it a little bit just because I assume rates are going to increase. I think Washington Electric got a rate increase, but I don't recall what it's it was. It's a little more than 10%. 13, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, that's, yeah. we're, we're doing a dark 
Yeah. For that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the same with the uh, fuel uh, heat. Uh, I raised that some too, just because <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, our building maintenance, we did uh, add a little to that to 4250 just because there's some things that we need to do to the building. Um, add some airlines and stuff like that. Um, change some light bulbs. There's a few other things that we needed to uh, wire up for different outlets. And these are light bulbs that are up in the top of the... Yeah, you're not going to do with the ladder. Um, a ladder truck. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, you can't spend a ladder. Well, yeah, not... <laughs> 35 footer is not going to cut. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going to have to be able to put the ladder onto something. Yeah, right. Uh, radio dispatch. I wasn't sure what it was going up, so I kept it the same. I'm sure it's going to go up. I don't remember seeing a bill or the estimate for that. Do you? No, and, and they're in the process of changing the whole system. So they're another, that's a, a shot in the dark as to what is going to happen with that. And, and it's... There's nothing we can do about it. It's out of our hands. And so remind me when we typically get that during the, do we get it in January? What the um, radio dispatch? Yeah. Or it was um, a proposed update. Usually I've seen it. I thought I've seen it by now. I haven't seen I think it. They're they behind, come through. I think they're behind the eight ball on it this year. Well, yeah. well, well it's because they're in the midst of trying to figure out if they're going to reorganize themselves, I think. But, you know, on things, on things like that, like the insurance cost, before town meeting, we'll know what the insurance yep. cost is. We'll probably know what the radio well, dispatch sure we'll is. So then, yeah. we understand those are plug numbers for now. It looks like it was a three percent increase over the last the last couple there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, but I think it's going to be more than that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But I do think that based on that email that you sent through for how they're going to change the dispatch, I think that's something. I don't know how we plan for that because if we don't start planning. It's going to be a huge number at right. the end. Yeah, and I think well, that was like a $10,000 $10, a year, if I remember right. I think um, so. Which we'll have to figure, I'll have to figure that out. But we can, we can plug those numbers in, certainly. Yeah, I think that's, that's something that, you know, when we talked about it way back when, it might be something to throw into this CIP and, and add that in and then as as a group figure out how we move forward with funding up everything that's in that right in that capital improvement plan so um yeah i i think that you know that'd probably be an appropriate way to, yep. to add that in uh our dues and training uh should stay the same those don't normally go up course and seminars we we kept that the same fire warden we've kept that the same that hasn't changed in forever uh, diesel, I brought up a number a bit just because that's the way of the game. Six dollars a gallon. Yeah. Uh, we kept the stipends at, at the same uh, as before, and our radio communication, so our new radios and stuff like that, any kind of radio maintenance, we kept that the same as well. So it would be a total of, at least on our end, uh, the debt services, did you plug those numbers? I plugged in, in the yeah, I corrected thought you did. numbers. Yeah. Um, uh, so as far as prior to the debt services, we're at an increase of 3.9%. Uh, and then with the bonds and everything else, looks like it's actually gone down a little bit. Well, our interest is going down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we're paying off yeah. the debt, yeah. it just goes down. So that's our proposed uh, <coughs> budget for next fiscal year and in terms of this year you think you're gonna be you guys you guys usually come in very good on your budget even though you spend some money in different categories so yeah, is that we what can we can anticipate for this year yeah I think we're in good shape so okay great we're, we're questions anyone budget committee vehicle board committee. members yeah for the most part yeah So even sure though, even though the structure, the structure is going to change, the money doesn't change. So right. that's the good news. And and we are going to continue to watch our budget like a hawk, like we always do. Yeah. There's there's no from our standpoint, there's no change in how we monitor our budget. Yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Mark, 
uh, question for you. Um, have we have we added that um, that dispatch um, figure to that CIP at this point? I can't remember if we did that through conversation without an official form um, or not, or is it something that we should be asking Eric just just fill out a form and and get to us so we can get it in there appropriately? Right. The dispatch, the only thing that's on the, the dispatch is not on the CIP. Okay. So we should add that. So yeah, maybe fine, if you want to fill out one of those forms, we can get it on and that'll be brought back to light yep. during the conversation that, that the budget committee has with the select board. I can do that. <clears throat> Any questions, anyone else? Any concerns? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And and this is also our monthly meeting, right? Correct. So let's let's switch from the budget discussion into the monthly meeting. So this past month, and it's built on meeting to meeting month, not yeah. month. Uh, much busier. We had ten calls uh, during the time period, so we're up to sixty-one so far. Uh, no mutual aids out. We had one mutual aid in, and that was for a wildland fire. We had uh, we invited Worcester to to the hot dog roast. Um, as far as responses, we had a maximum number of nine responders. Minimum number of two. Our average this time gone up a little bit to 5.3 per call. Engine one has been out seven times. Engine six out twice. Tanker out three times. The rescue out. Three times and truck 14 or utility pickup was out once. That was for the wildland fire because that carry. That's most of what that carries. Uh, and then if there's a structure fire, that's carrying hose. Hopefully it's not frozen, but hose back to the station to get dried out and stuff like that. So that's the use of that vehicle. As far as uh, calls, um, we've had two up on 89. One was the car was smoking. It was a blown oil line. And engine responded, three responders. East Hill, there was a, a tree and a power line. We held the vehicles in quarters because it was just down the, the road from my house. And I went right to it. And um, we were able to hold the, everybody in, in quarters. We didn't need to have them respond. On a, on a tree, on a, on a power line thing, there's nothing really the fire department can do other than get there and call dispatch and say, hey, this is the pull number, and get whichever electric company is rolling. Because we're obviously not going to spray a tree that's burning on a power line. Um, and usually what happens is the tree will burn for a while, and the fuse will finally pop, and then it's stabilized until they come down and cut it. But we're not going near it. We're not. That's not our bailiwick. We just uh, make sure no one out. else goes near yeah. it, too. Yeah. Keep the public away. Yeah. Right. Um, we had a rescue call on East Hill that was canceled before anybody could get there. Um, we had a stuck door call on Route 2. Uh, Center Road was the wildland fire. Um, a pucker factor along with Red Hen is the state complex fire alarm, whenever that goes off. And that ended up being a false alarm. They called and said, it's a false alarm. And we could take a breath. and. It, it was it was all almost within a, I think it was within a minute that they canceled so we were starting to roll when we got the cancellation but anytime we hear that that's going off there's a pucker factor on that one as with Red Hen there was a early morning fire call there that ended up being false alarm but we responded uh, with engine one and six went in with the thermal imaging camera to check things out and determined that it was a false alarm um, we had burning leaves on Route 2. We had a car in the median on 89. Um, it was, and that one is quite interesting because it was just past the curb when you get on southbound from exit 9. So we used the tanker as a safety block above that curve to get people over so nobody would be schwacked once they come over the, the hill and around the corner. Um, that's just something that's part of what we signed up for. Um, and then we had a tree on right at the corner of Story, Nellie Chase, and North Branch, or North Bear Swamp. Um, the fast squad calls, there was a total of 15. Two of those were conjunction with fire department calls, so we had 
13 medical only calls that was up I forget what last year last month's number was but that was an increase as far as training we were planning to have uh, training put on by someone from uh, Waterbury Ambulance uh, to do emergency vehicle ops and they somehow got double billed so that's gonna we're gonna do that at another point in time um, we are though, though however there is some good news our air our new air packs were delivered Yay. And um, we're going to uh, have training next Tuesday on that um, with the new packs. So until then, we've got them stored in boxes. And uh, fun fact that it's apparently cheaper labor-wise to send air tanks completely full of air, which then becomes quasi-hazardous cargo, than to use the manpower to empty the tanks and mail them out. That's the way it goes. Um, so we'll we'll be doing that and looking forward to having the new air packs. Um, as far as repairs go, our heating system is down. We have had a valve controller that's been out for a long time because we haven't been able to get it, but that we can bypass and leave it open in our loop system. But the blower that clears the the uh, flue died, and of course it died. I, probably sometime during the summer when we don't know it because it'll it, it'll turn on for the domestic hot water heat um, and that's the only thing during the summertime but we don't notice it until we walk in there and the temps drop and it's like why is the heat working so the uh, they came and they figured out it's the, the fan that blows through the, the exhaust and their normal uh, distributor couldn't get the park in so then they when I called up Monday and said hey we have no heat this needs to be fixed now they went to another uh, distributor and got the park and it's going to come in tomorrow or it's not going to come repair it during the snow time tomorrow so we should have heat uh, Monday morning even though we had that cold temp it was 55 inside the building uh, so the, the building kept heat pretty well normally we keep the bays at 60 in the the training office area at 65, uh, so it it has been holding its its temp. So we're we're lucky in that respect. Um, and then we're getting um, or we've gotten radios. We got a donation through the Middlesex Community Fund that paid for all but what a thousand dollars of the new radios. Yep. Uh, so that's uh, nice to have. So we're. We're getting new air packs, new radios. We're going to be uh, getting new bunker gear. My hope is that people in the town are going to say, hey, the, the department's starting to really do look and act professional, um, visibly to them. Not that we haven't been looking and acting professional, but they're going to start seeing that, and maybe it will spur some interest in people want, wanting to join. Yeah, yeah. Her, so that's. I, I think we're we're in a good position. Obviously, with that discussion with the building and the sprinkler, that's to me that's a benefit of us being here during that discussion because that's that's something I would like to see us more on, especially as if there's more commercial building going on, that we have a say in that approval process, so we know what's coming ahead. And if there's something that we need to plan for, um, like Berlin did when the propane facility went in they were able to get some funding from the company in order to to uh, if there was ever a problem down there that they had the capability to to deal with it so that's you know as middlesex starts to grow we need to be in on the ground floor of that stuff so so we know what's going on and if there are any questions that comes up. well as you know there have been ongoing discussions about a water system for the village well there's a big one, you know, if we're going to have a water system, can it be adequate to supply water to a sprinkler system? Hydrants, that kind of stuff. So yes, absolutely. So, but uh, we're, I, I feel we're in a good place. I think we're doing well. We're continuing to do well. Uh, by the increase of the call numbers, the increase of the, of the respond, responders, um, those are all positive signs yeah. that, that people are, are liking what it is that they do as part of the fire department. Great. Thank you. Any questions? How many, questions, anyone? How many members are you? 
10, I think we're at 10 right now. So that's, yeah, it's 10 because at the, the, the call with nine, there was only one that didn't show up, so. There and Dorinda, we are, we are all set for the December 1st transition. The league's all set. December or January? January. January, January. January yes. Yeah. I've already notified the league. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And we have, we'll have our elections. December, we flip our business meeting and training. Um, so it's the annual meeting and business meeting on the first Tuesday. So that's when we'll have our elections and then the training is the third. So we'll have those results. And Just as a reminder, the select board has to appoint the chief. Right. That's yep. Yeah. I'm giving you the, the yeah. heads yeah. up that so. it's coming the first Tuesday to the third. Um, so I'll get that. You'll have you'll have uh, the info prior. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be along. If you're late, I know you we might. Okay. Might be yeah, I, I have another meeting at seven. So. There you go. Thank you again. Yeah. Highway report. Well, Eric, Victor. <laughs> we have, um, let's see, where to begin? The mm -hmm. pad is going to be for the assault shed. It's going to be put in later this week. Being snowing tomorrow, he can't work tomorrow. <laughs> he was hoping, he said anytime after Tuesday, so I'm assuming whatever better day between Thursday and Friday. That would be good. Great. That's really um, good news. The equipment's there, right? I didn't see it when we left, but they said it'd be there at some point. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Eric, I couldn't hear you. Did you say the pad is going to be installed tomorrow? No, it will not be tomorrow because of the weather. Okay. So probably Thursday or Friday. Okay. Um, the new truck probably won't be until the end of the week. They're waiting on some parts for the plug-in for the harness down at the dealer. It's all done at where the parts were installed. Um, so I'm waiting on them on that. Um, as far as the salt shed is concerned, um, I can do a temporary type of structure on this pad uh, with concrete blocks that we have, but I will need to buy some more and put a temporary roof. Um, I guess my question would be is if I could get the okay to spend up to $3,000 to do so. So the plan was originally to use the concrete blocks we have and put tarps over it. Yeah, I, I was looking at what we have, and we don't have enough to go high enough. Okay. But um, we don't want to put a tarp over it flat. Well, it, the, it, the problem we run into with, with the tarp, and it, it can be done. But you're going to have to shovel the snow off it every time you want to get to the salt. Because it piles up on top of the tar. Yep. Yep. So what would the what would the so temporary this would be? be? Three-walled concrete block structure. Yep. Roughly the concrete blocks would be roughly eight feet high, and just a cheap frame with a tarp or whatever for a roof over it, so that you don't have to keep on taking it off, and you can dig into the pile and take it out. We're talking. But I mean, you're talking about. Wood trusses? What are you talking about? Yeah, I've got. Uh, I acquired two steel I beams from uh, from Bulldogs. They had some kicking around. They said they would drop them off for a going across to yeah. support it, and it's just a matter of putting something up to hold the tarp off the off it. But I'd have to purchase some blocks, so I don't know. You, I don't I, know how many I'll have to have because we have some. Some are broken. Some are. So after I get them all laid out, then I'll know exactly what I'll need. Okay. So. So do we need a motion to approve that? Probably we do. So I don't think it'll be that much, but I give myself. Yeah. So we're safer with the motion, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll move approved. Is there a second? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Uh, all in favor? Right. Of three thousand dollars, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, up yeah. to yeah. 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 Yeah.
much better solution. So. Um, secondly, uh, I had a, the controller that controls our, our uh, sanding on the Freightliner, the, the only truck that does salt. I had it changed out to one where we can monitor and control better the salt usage so it's not being wasted. Um, and that was, like I, they gave me a price of 3900 but I think it's less than that. I haven't got the bill yet. But the truck is back and that works, so. Other than that, we should be good to go for tomorrow. And our old truck, we're still in the... <laughs> it's there if we need it. <laughs> it's there if we need it. Okay. Hopefully we don't. And our uh, man doing a CDL training, how's yeah. that going? Good. He's almost completed his hours of uh, driving and uh, is just waiting on the test, which I believe is the 21st. Great. Mm. Great. Now, I saw in Marshfield, Victor and Eric, that they bought with their ARPA funds a leaf blower. Mm -hmm. And I was behind it, and I'm like, what contraption is this, and what good is it doing? Is it doing good? Great, actually. Um, getting the leaves out of the <laughs> ditch and off the road so you can grade is... Get in, but they were blowing them into the ditch. Well, it should be going out. <laughs> I was like, what? They're just going right into the ditch. Maybe they, maybe they were just getting used well, to it. Well, you probably have to take more than one pass to get them out, but yes. But, they're, but it's in... Yes, because yeah. Berlin has, a, has an attachment they made on the front of their grader that does that. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I heard why it's important, but that I was, was like, but they're just blowing them right in the ditch. Well... But they just probably had to do a second half. It was very slow, though. Oh my God! It was like going like one mile an hour. Yeah, I don't. What kind of setup did they have? I it was know. on the back of like a pickup truck. Oh yeah. You know, maybe the bag was coming next. Yeah. Maybe the what? The back. The bag bag or, oh, the bag. Bag. <laughs> it just didn't look terribly efficient to me. It was just sort of just blowing them into the air, right down into the ditch. But. Yeah. Well, we can we can buy a. Hell of a leaf blower to put on our uh, roadside mower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that day ever comes. Yeah, right. If that day ever comes. Anything else? I don't think so. Did you ever oh, make actually, actually, yes. Go ahead. Talking about that roadside mower, did, did we, uh, I know I gave that to you. Have you got, did you get touch bases with Pete? I have Michelle? not yet, no. Okay. No, that's on my list of things to do. Okay. There is one more thing. Oh. I, the guardrail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guardrail, right. We had a, a question come up uh, from a resident uh, questioning about having a guardrail put up on Center Road, just below Picard Corners, going towards Brook Road, on that outside where it drops off, because the road, there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, I did a quick call to um, Lafayette's to get a price on uh, having guardrails installed, just because I figured that question would come up of how much it would cost. Um, they have two different prices. They have a $30, $38 a foot for brand new guardrail or $19 a foot for used guardrail. And that's about 770 feet. So you're looking at a difference of $15,000 to $30,000. For a guardrail. For a guardrail. Yeah. I remember just I asked straight. for a guardrail on Dolan Road a long time ago. I'm just nobody just giving the information out there and letting <laughs> you know that that question was brought up by a resident. So you guys are aware. So that's the inside of that corner? It'd be the, well, it's the outside of the corner where it drops off. You go. You go what about down putting the those hill? big stones on like you do with those some of those places? Like on Portal Road, you have those yeah. big stones so that, I mean, the car would crash into them, but they right. wouldn't crash over into the river. Possibility, but there's nothing there stopping a car from going over the edge right now. Not much. There's a couple of trees, but that's about it. Where on Center Road? Where? Yeah, it's yeah. So you can yeah. come off from the Corner down, the down towards where Center Road is. Because you go down the hill from the... Yeah, that's right. It's right on the right-hand side where it drops off. There's a big yellow Turn. house. Right, yeah. Right across the yeah. 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 right yeah. yeah. It's where you... Um, so same yeah, as on the intersection, go up the hill. Right, yeah. Where yeah. Center Road is. Where the swamp is. 
Yeah. Which yeah. means yeah. Brook Road. Yeah. Above that, it's above the center road, Brook Road yeah. intersection is right. what you're right talking about. So right went up towards the corner. Oh, yeah. okay. come on. But that's a okay. wide turn. That's not It's a big drop. Just put a sign up. <laughs> I am just passing along the information. <laughs> we don't have that much on our guardrail budget. No, we do not. When the bus goes down Dolan into that ravine, then maybe they'll get a, yep. a guardrail. That's all well, I'll take. you know, this, this is, you know, we should have our eye on things like this yeah. that we need to do, but we need to do it in a planned way. Maybe there's well, grant money available, yeah. who knows? But, yeah, figure out but as, you, as you said, I, when, when uh, the bus went backwards off, off Molly Supal up there, whenever it was two years ago, that was pretty scary, and that isn't a big drop off. We've got some, came down the hill backwards and went off with all the kids on board. Mm -hmm. hey, Scary. That, that was passed along today, so I forgot I'd bring it up. Okay. Up. Well, when you guys get to your budget, mm -hmm. there you go. We're working on it. So I ran, I have a question. So I came up my driveway one fair fall summer morning and there's a guy with a flashlight peering in the culvert across the road. Yep. Yeah, so I, I stopped and I, I went over and said, hi, what are you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. What's going on? Oh, I'm from the, 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 you know, the Regional Planning Commission. We're doing our culvert mm -hmm. survey. Yep. I haven't done the information back yet, but yeah. Yep. So they, I mean, and I guess somehow I didn't remember this or didn't know this, but every so many years they do a culvert survey as part of their yes, is, services to us. Yes, and that, that information is stored on a map, which we have access to, right. and we can update that as we replace culverts as well. Yeah, I saw them down off from Center Road, and I, had, I thought it had to do with the paving project and the culverts that were put in through that. I was scared with the that. environmental people telling us we needed to put shot rock in all our ditches. <laughs> anyway, I, I was I was just yeah. interested. Yeah, because he I, should be done that now, but he said he would get the uh, information as soon as possible. Yep. So he'll have a report of some sort. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Before you go, Eric, how many feet is that drop off? Has that? That whole distance is 770 feet. I measured it. Yeah, along 770 feet along the road, the yes. drop off is not No, it's not that feet. deep. No. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Yes. Don't Thank put you. that. Don't Thank put you. that in the minutes. We'll have, we'll have panic on our hands. <laughs> it is a pretty good drop off, though. Yes. It is a pretty good drop off. Okay. Anything else on the roads? I think so. The new paving is really nice. People are driving really fast. Right. I was going to say we didn't need to spend all that money. We could have just had people drive more slowly. <laughs> <laughs> So did we get, did we, we're all set on the on the grant portion of that? Uh, with these I work finished it. filling it out this afternoon. Okay. okay. I'm just going to review it and then they can send it all off. Well, he's coming back to fix that joint. Is yes. he still going to do that? One right on the bridge? Uh, one way you jump. No, you get, at the... Uh, Millsack State you, Highway at Millsack. Where oh. the transitions down yeah. there? Yeah. Heading towards the interstate, there's a bump, and they're going yeah. to address that. Which one don't you like? The one that goes down towards Great Old Brook Road? The one that's right on the bridge that pulls all the water right there. That one. That seam right there. It, oh, seam in the center of the bridge? Yeah, yeah it, it develops a big pool of water there uh, to the inside of the bridge as you're coming, as you're coming down. So. Get a drill and drill a few holes. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm sorry we're uh, running a little behind schedule. So, uh, Wrightsville Recreation Area requests a raise on per capita assessments. Director Colin O'Neill. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you, Colin, earlier. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I think I might relocate to make it a little easier on people who are remote. Oh, the owl, the owl yeah. sees you perfectly. I'm sorry? The owl's picking you up. Oh, the owl's. oh I didn't realize that. I, I thought it was this. No. Okay. Oh, yeah, right here. Is on the job. Great. All right. It's wise owl. I can see Um Yes. So you are correct. We are seeking um, an increase to the cap 
of the annual per capita that we assess to all four of the member district towns. And just to give you a, a little history, the park has been in operation for 37 years, and over that period, this will be the second time that we've sought an increase to that cap. Um, I've run the park for 21 years as my side hustle, um, and we did seek a, an increase to the cap eight years ago. We increased it by, and we, we sought, we, um, we got that approved by all four towns, and that was um, a $1 increase. And that got eaten up pretty quickly by the great um, increase in the minimum wage. And I'm fully in support of paying people better, um, but that's, it's gone, minimum wage has gone up significantly in that eight year period. Um, now, just because we're seeking to increase the, the cap to $4, we're not in a race to get to $4. The, the plan is to go from the current $1.50 per capita um, in 2023 to make, it, to make a significant increase to $2.50 per capita to enable my position to go from a side hustle, which this year will be 1,200 and something hours. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's no longer, a, it's, I say that in jest. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's no longer a side hustle. Um, so the plan is to increase that, that between that and our increased revenue and a new contract we have with the state that contracts us to maintain Shady Reel and the boat launch, those all, those sources will enable my position to go to 85% of full time for 2023, which will enable me to leave my real job and focus entirely on rights film. And the, the reason, well, there are a couple of reasons why we want to transition my position to 85% and perhaps eventually to 100% of full time is to keep up with current demands. Um, the park has gotten very busy. There's safety issues that go along with that and um, having more time to do more thorough training with my crew. But most significantly, it's we have a lot of deferred maintenance. Um, so we can try to get the funding for that through a few avenues. One could be to come to the town and ask for some of your upper money. I don't want to do that. Um, I'd prefer to transition my position to, to 85 so I have time to write grant applications so we can pay for um, all of those repairs and improvements with grants. We have um, stashed a good little fund as our um, matching fund for the grants. So it's really just the, the administrative time to, and we have many grants identified. Um, so it's the administrative time to apply for those grants, do the planning. I mean, you know, you guys are earlier talking about the same concept. Uh, professional help, planning, permits, all of that. Any questions at, that, at this point? Um, so my, my strong impression is that over time, the usage of that facility has continued to increase. I know disc golf has become a big thing and, and yeah. other, ac other activities. Do you have any numbers about usage numbers? I do. I oh, do. I'm sorry. I didn't bring, I didn't bring my full um, report though. I mean, cause I have comparatives that go back seven years, but. Oh, okay. There you go. I'm so yeah, sorry, so 17,000 um, day use visitors. Now this is the first year we've tracked that number. So I don't have any comparatives for that, but it would be similar for last year and then thousands less before the pandemic. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, you, you are definitely correct. Use has gone up significantly, so has revenue, so has um, staffing. Um, and it's, I mean, it's, it's what we want. We we're getting our residents recreating, I call it recreation fitness, 
you know, it's, it's really succeeding. And we have a lot of incentives built right in for district residents where um, we have discounts for season passes, discounts for boat rentals. And I do have figures on, yeah. on you know, how much we give back to the community and discounts to incentivize them to come and play and, and stay fit. And just to build on that, so we have like the retail price that we're um, hoping that only tourists are paying, and then our residents are all paying a, you know, some level of discount from there. And we want to continue to increase those incentive, those discount incentives. Um, one thing that going to full time will enable me to do is um, seek a VOREC grant, Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Consortium grant, to purchase more um, boats. And right now, we only rent boats for use at the reservoir. This plan will enable us to have enough quality boats where we can let our residents use them off-site as well. At, and, and we rent to about half price of what they're going to get it from Umiak. I mean, to our residents, we rent to, for about half price. When are you open with that? With, is it Memorial Day, or is it before that? So <laughs> we usually open, <clears throat> weather depending, um, the weekend before Memorial Day. And the last two years, we've had heat waves in late May, so we, we've we made a point to open. Even like last year, we opened, we weren't ready, so we, we, we weren't able to charge, but it was in the 90s in May, so we opened just so people had a place to come and cool off. So it was like four and a half months? That you so, so uh, you know, I don't have a tally, uh, but we stayed open through um, Columbus Day weekend, or okay. Columbus Day. So I don't know what that. It's yeah, it's a significant season, and you know it keeps getting. We don't open it just because we feel like opening it. We open it because there's, there's a demand, and we stay open because there's a demand. And if you guys drive on Route 12, often when our gate isn't open, you'll see cars parked out on that big triangle out there. And um, even though we have a we have an off season little rogue parking area to help alleviate that hazard of people on the road on Route 12 and walking across there. But that fills up also. There's, that has capacity of 15. Um, and actually, part of, the, part of the plan, our 15-year plan, is to harden off um, areas of the parking so we can have that gate open more. So not only when we're there with staff, but um, you know, perhaps year-round, where we have that gate open and just let people come and use the facility. But we have to harden it off because people will do donuts in their fields, um, et cetera. So um, yeah, so the plan is to go up to 250 this first year, and I've always tried to increase our revenue through user fees, through revenue. And that in, in transitioning my position to full time will also enable me to um, do more marketing, get more partnerships, sponsorships, um, work with area health and wellness programs at different businesses, um, Norwich University, for example. So, you know, if we pay a little bit more the first couple years via the per capita, my work will generate a significant increase in revenue, which should really reduce our dependency on the per capita. Sure. So in the plan written here, you know, we would seek to, to never have to increase that per capita by more than 3% in any given year, ideally less than that. Um, you know, unforeseen circumstances, perhaps, we would have to go more than that, but I mean, I'd like to see it say stagnant at 250 for a few years before we had to increase it at all. I'm a resident. I grew up here, grew up in Middlesex. Um. Okay. Questions, anyone? Budget committee, yes. Yeah, George. Yes, George. Um, well, yeah. 
I'm, a, I'm our rep to the Riceville Beach Breakfast as an all conservation commission. Um, I've looked at the finances in, in detail at our last Riceville meeting, and, and I'm impressed with what Colin's doing and as a manager. And the Conservation Commission supports this, this increase. Thank you. Thanks, George. Any other questions? I think we're all set. Thank you. Um, do you vote on this? We will include it in our budget. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, we get, so the so the, the way this the way this works is this is when we develop our budget every year. So you've requested an increase. We will include that in our budget, and then the select board votes to approve the budget, and then the voters vote at town meeting. So I don't know what you were anticipating in terms of when the rate increase would be effective. Well, the anticipation is for when we invoice the towns for 2023, and we usually receive payment in May or June from the towns. So that's after town meeting, right? I'm sorry? Yes, that would be after town meeting. Yes. So right. assuming, assuming it's in the budget and assuming it gets approved, it'll be fine. But we won't vote on it tonight. Okay. So I just, all I'm, I'm just looking to make sure I understand because I'm going to, you're the first town that I'm going to. Yeah. And I'll go to Worcester next, and then East Montpelier and Montpelier. Yep. And I just want to give, have a good, clear sense of what I can say to them as far as what Middlesex is, because that's going to be the first question is what have the other towns said? I, I would, I mean, we can, we can pull the board, but I can't imagine we're not going to be supportive of this. Okay. I mean, I, Anybody have any objection or any serious concerns about no, this? No, but I do want to make a clarification. Okay. This is our FY24 budget, so we, we do not pay out anything until after July 1. Okay. So, yeah, and I don't, normally, I don't, I don't look at the envelopes. I'm yeah, really, I don't no, know what Okay, <laughs> no, but you had said you received payment in May, but that won't happen because this is our next year's budget. You probably received maybe our payment sometime along for the current year, but right. this is for the next year. I appreciate that clarification. Yeah, we understood that at the right still. Thank you for Okay. So yeah. the understanding is you will put it in the budget. Yeah. Yes. You have to vote on I think that's what you were looking yeah. for. And do so some towns have it as where they are like having it as a line item? Like you have to you don't have to go and get votes or anything, do you? We don't, Signatures? No, no. We just we just get it. I mean, in the in the past, the last time we did this eight years ago, came to the mood meeting downstairs, they approved it, and I went to the next one. Oh, and it, yeah. For another, none of the towns have ever voted at town meeting for it. Well, it's just in the it's actually in the budget amongst all these other items. I'm not questioning. Yeah, the and I don't remember. I do remember you coming, and I don't remember whether or not how we, we handled it. Like how we handled it, because even if we were to say yes, we're voting on this. We still have to put it in the budget, and the budget still has to get voted on, right? right? I mean, right. well, the, the the problem is there's no much, you know, it's not in this year's budget, so we have no money to give you this year. It could have been an extra thing that you guys did too at a random time that wasn't a part of the budget. I'm wondering. Well, we have pay rights bill dues every year, so they do have a line item in the budget. Right, right. right. but and but the line item we have. In the it's budget for this year is for the old amount. Right, for the old the amount. Yeah. Right. So that's the one you already paid on June 1st. No, no, we haven't. No. That's the one we will pay. That's the one we will pay. Okay. And this, then, it's, it, it's, our, our fiscal year goes from, from July 1st to June 30th. So when we're having a budget discussion now, it's for next July 1 to the following June 30th. So we've already approved our budget for this year. Which is everybody. All the towns are like that. Right. Yeah. Well, some have different fiscal years, so oh, they, I don't think they're all on the... But, but anyway. Federal fiscal year, maybe. So, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm confusing it. But let, let, let me just back up. So what happens is you heard the fire department discussion tonight. In the next, the next few meetings, we'll be hearing from other town departments. We put together our budget. We approve it typically in January. The select board approves it. Then it gets presented to the town meeting. The voters approve it or amend it or don't approve it. They've always approved it. Uh, and then that's for the following year. Starting on July. July 1. Of? 2023. 
Right. Right. Yes. No, okay. I, I understand completely. Okay. I'm sorry if I confused but you. But then Dorinda's saying that you don't pay the Wrightsville assessment until June 1st was almost, which is almost the end of the fiscal. Is that no, what I heard so you say? What I was trying to say was this is for budget year that begins in um, July of 2023 and ends in June of 2024. Right, so we get our assessment. And so July. you'll be billing us for the current, our current year is in for 2750 for where we're sitting right today. And I don't know, I don't think we've, we may have received a bill yet, but I don't recall paying it yet. No, you would have received last, and that would have been paid. Yeah. Last so, for, so the one that's for this beginning on July one. It, I mean, we work months ahead of time here with these budgets, so it's hard to explain. But it's for twenty-seven fifty, and then beginning next July, or the yeah, July twenty twenty-three will would be the forty-five twenty. Yep. Yeah. I did. What happens if one of the other towns says, no, we won't increase it? Then we can't increase it. Oh. <laughs> That's why I always come to Middlesex first. Okay. Well, I come to Middlesex first because it's in your town. Yeah. Um, and I had success last time coming yeah. to you guys first. <laughs> and then all the other towns. <laughs> felt like. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. They all... And who else is in this district? Uh, so it's um, Middlesex, Montpelier, East Montpelier, East Montpelier and Worcester. And I go to Montpelier last, because they have all the money. So if I can show them that the three other towns are on board, then it's a much easier sell for them. Yeah, and I think, I'm wondering if there was a time that you came to us in some not out of budget season and asked for money and we agreed to it. I do remember there being a not, but I, you know, it was the same time I came it was here. The same time, okay. Came it here in just gone November in eight years ago. Okay. And and then that next that next our next season, um, so the July payment July. had that new per um, the new per capita assessment. All right, I'm good. Okay. I understand yep. you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Always a pleasure to see you, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you about the trails and all <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You have the whole family here tonight. I know. <laughs> hey, Colin, was there an, a young man also named Colin that used to work at the beach or not? Someone's got a comment in the chat. Very redhead, uh, like a blonde, redheaded, younger guy. I thought Colin Callum. Callum, okay, that's why. <laughs> when I looked at you, I'm like, that's not the guy I remember. Boy, he ages. He was a boy. I wasn't kidding. Watch what you say, Lizzie. But, but, but he, was, he did work at the beach, right? Did he come here? I think he came here and even like spoke about it once or something. I know he did. That's why I was confused. When, and Sarah was too. She was like, that's not who I remember. Okay. Okay. Dorinda, treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. Um, I don't have anything really exciting. I'd like to introduce Olivia. This is our new owl. Olivia. Oh, yeah. yeah, Olivia. And um, so it'll, everything came in. The only issue we had was one cord, which I got to send back and get a different one. But um, other than that, it seems to be working. It seems to be working great. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and came in way under budget. So great. Yay. So it's always work. a plus. It's always a plus. Yeah. But. Well, when you think when you think what we thought this was going to cost back when we started talking about this during the pandemic. Yeah. No, it worked out. Um, yeah, I got everything other than the TV. You know, when I went out this time, you gave me two thousand. I think I spent twelve hundred. Uh, um, no really finance stuff to work on. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the CB fiber easement. easement to review. The amended CB fiber. You, you, always, you guys all got that, correct? Remind us. 
I read yes. one. I, don't I said it. I said it yesterday. I forwarded it from Bill. He said it last night. This is just slightly changed from the first one we had in that the first one was um, written more to cover a private landowner than a municipality, um, and so the references to um, you know uh, a town versus mm. a person granting uh, a right away uh, were changed. The ones you have at your desks are, are the revised ones. Yeah. Right. But there's no significant change in the intent no. of the document. We have to accept that. I, I read it over and it sounded fine to me. Yeah. Pretty, soon. Pretty straightforward. Um, and I believe when we talked about this before, we decided that, uh, that all things being equal, we would review and approve this and not submit it to our attorney for review. It always seems more complicated than it should yeah. be, but when you when you get to the meat of it, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Anybody have any concerns about that approach? Is there um, anything about heights or anything like that? Or not? Like, what is this that they're putting in again? It's, um, I think they call it an OLT, which basically to me is a junction box. Um, it's going to go right where the other, um, I think, I think that one's Green Mountain Power uh, boxes. And what they're basically doing is aggregating fiber. So a strand will come up um, past the school. One will come, uh, well, the center road, Brook, uh, Brook Road loop will come up and meet there. And what's the other one? Um, uh, Bear Swamp? East Bear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. East Bear. Yeah. So I think those three, at least at that point, come to come together and uh, are interconnected there. Um, so it's basically just a, a cabinet that's used to splice the. And that right there in the pullout where consolidated is. Yeah. 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 Oh, is that who that is? It's consolidated. That's consolidated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. So it's an it's an area. They don't they don't have any height description in here, but it says the area will be 18 feet by 18 feet, located on the southeasterly side of an existing utility facility, and the southern side of an existing driveway is depicted in Exhibit A. The 18 feet by 18 feet, I think, is just the ground. The land's yeah, working. Yeah, the ground, so they can get in there and work, but the box won't be any bigger than the one consolidated, probably smaller. Right. Um, and my understanding... I think they have to bring power into that cabinet because sure. there's probably yeah. surge protection and backup and stuff like that. But and I did I did actually see a picture of the cabinets and I I, I think this one's probably about four feet <laughs> wide, maybe three feet wide. That's what the lady said, what's her name there? Was yeah. asking for permission to bury the cable. Right. Is her name? Um, Karen. 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 And is it by someone's property? You said it's it, by our property. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's, it's not right off the edge of the driveway. Yeah. As you as you turn into the town garage on the right. Okay. The should existing we, box is right there. there. They're right. There's already an existing box. There's a no fly zone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only just saying because there's so many things that they can put in here, and do we? Ca I mean, yeah. I don't care, but do we care? Like that, you know, that it they is can what it put is. in it's great, you know, foundations yeah. and guys and right and poles and I mean, things the like news, that. The good news is the poles and everything are right there. The poles are right so there. Exactly. It's not like yeah. I would anticipate they would put in a new pole. Okay. Yeah. I'm just imagining, you know, like 50 years down the road yeah. and this gets pulled out of its rusty file cabinet. 50 years down the road it would be that big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But we're putting yeah. up a telecommunications tower because we have an easement. The the one the the dimensions I saw were, were definitely not as maybe a little higher than this table, but certainly you know no bigger. Um, a bunch of electronics are stored. In there. Yeah, I mean that's what it looks like today. Yeah. No, there's no height restrictions in here. No. no. And it's not going to be that high. Anymore. I think it's actually it's smaller, be smaller, not smaller. bigger. Well, it's not yeah. that. I'm saying that they can also erect all these other things. Yeah. And in 50 years, we won't be using CV. Probably not. 
And we'll all be dead in 50 years, so what does it matter? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what do we care when we leave okay. the rest of our okay. people? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, are people comfortable, someone making a motion? I'm making, making a motion, motion that we uh, authorize uh, the, or no, that we grant the easement to CV Fiber and authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah, Sarah Brown. Yep, so I'm going to sign one of these, Sarah, yeah. and give it to you, right? Yeah, so this is the easement. I got it right here. I got it right here. Uh, Sarah, you have the information on where to this is the one. fax it. I don't know. Sarah just told me to tell you to sign this. Oh, one. sign that one. That's yeah. the one she wants to sign. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I got it. To Karen, the one that. I'll, I'll probably send her an email tonight that says it passed because they'll, they'll probably okay, be working on it by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> Especially here. Well, with snow coming, maybe not. But, maybe not. Yeah. Just let you know, I have a quick, very funny story that the chair will allow. I got a call from a hairdresser in Moortown who said that the uh, person putting up the lines for CV fiber dropped a set of keys. And she knows that because of her security cameras. But I couldn't figure out CB Fiber. They were a contracted company out of North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So I ended up emailing one of your CB Fiber persons. And she said, oh, that must have been Tony. So yeah. I said, well, I don't, we called and she said, well, all right, we'll just, you know, you figured out where she would leave the keys. So then <laughs> I was driving up to uh, Danville and I see that company that, you know, straight uh, like putting fiber up or taking inventory of the poles. I pull over. I run across the guy and I said, hey, listen, did you guys ever find your keys? He said, Tony's keys? I'm in Danville, right? He says, oh, yeah, we picked them up this morning. It was really nice. That is such a small. Uh, it, was a, it was a North Carolina company. Yeah. I mean, it was just kind of. Yeah. He's <laughs> good, Tony. He's one of the ones. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, approving minutes of the November 1, 2022 Select Board Meeting Action. Likely, is there a motion? Oh, oh, go ahead, Victor. I'll move the motion. Okay, I'll second. As stated. Thank you. All in favor of the motion to approve the November 1, 2022 minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, orders have been signed or are in the process of being signed. Did everybody sign them? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any other matters that may come before the board? Can I just add that in the treasurer's report? Um, I should have told you that we have hard copies of the audit, if anybody cares to have a copy, but it's, it's up to you. But they're downstairs. It's got an electronic copy. That's good enough. It, well, they send us <laughs> bound hard copies. Yeah, thank you. But if you're interested. I wonder if there's something in the uh, statute about that. Where they have well, to? We have to. Sometimes we have to send them to banks, like every so often right. the bank has right. us. Yep. Yeah. To, so it looks a little more professional than sending them an email. An email. <laughs> you should be able to send them electronically. Yeah. 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 So do we have an electronic copy now? Yes. 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 We do. I would love to get an electronic copy. You did. We did. Oh, I did. That's right. Yeah. I did. did. Yes. I did. I read. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, pieces of Sarah's new workstation have started to come in, delivered to my house for some reason, but. Oh, I was going to ask you if it yeah. came in. Yeah, I yeah. The, this, um, the CPU might not be until the first of the year. Oh, really? <coughs> so again, parts. Um, so we shall see. Okay. Thank you all for your time and attention. We are adjourned. Hey. Liz, go home and take a nap. I know, huh?